All right, so let's say you're struggling with bills and you got a friend that has a lot of money and you get mad at your friend because they never offer assistance. You feel like they know your circumstance. You talked about it multiple times and they never took initiative to just give you money without you having to ask for it because you're too proud to ask. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, yo, if you're too proud to ask and you're too proud to receive, you know, like you feel like they should be more compassionate. They should be more considerate. They should just give you money. You know what I mean? Um, the reason you feel like that probably is because it would be easier and more comfortable for you because maybe you don't feel comfortable asking for help, you know, and um, you, you might say to yourself like, yo, they got eyes, they got ears, they have understanding. Like, how come they're not just giving me the shit that I didn't ask for? And it's like, well, because you didn't ask for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, even with God, like you might wonder, yo, why does the Bible says ask and you shall receive? Like, why do I have to ask? Shouldn't God automatically know what I need? Like, why do I even have to, if, if with God, you have to ask him to receive, what makes you think with people that, that, that rule doesn't apply? You know what I'm saying? With people, it, it applies even more because people definitely don't know what you're thinking or what you're going through all the time. You know what I'm saying? And just because they know doesn't mean they're quick to give assistance. Cause like maybe they're giving you space to see if you could do it for your, by yourself or for yourself. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean that they're withholding their cash from you maybe they're just you know um there's a lot of people that believe uh the most crippling thing you could do to a person is constantly give them help because then they become reliant on that help and never capable of doing things for themselves and it's you know a lot of people feel like they're like enabling you you know what i mean to always be in situations where you need help and never be able to do anything for yourself you know so yeah, I don't know, man. There's so many people that they want to be understood, but they don't want to talk. They don't want to have the conversation. They feel like the conversation is too confrontational, but then they sit with, you know, sit around tormenting themselves for years, like getting mad at people that don't understand you. And it's like, you never once took initiative to say what's going on and say how you feel to say, to have the conversation because you kept dwelling on how controversial the conversation was going to be, you know, and it might not even be as a lot of things we imagine is, is way worse in our imagination than what it is in real life or what it's going to be, you know, like usually our, our imagination is like 15 times worse than what actually ends up happening. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not, I'm not saying sometimes shit that we imagine is bad actually ends up happening, but a lot of shit that we're scared of, we never actually, it never ends up happening to us. But because we, we watch news so much and we fill our head like, you know, we, we, we watch it, we read newspapers and stuff and we load up on killings and shootings and stabbings and and, and people dying and stuff like that. And, and we wonder why we don't know how to be optimistic because you fill your head with pessimistic. Like, you know, if you want to be optimistic, you're like you should not watch the news. You know what I mean? It's going to make you anti optimistic, It's gonna make you pessimistic because all you're hearing is all the bad shit that's constantly happening and stuff. And that's all you think about. You know what I mean? And then subconsciously. That starts affecting you, you know, so there's so many family members that feel like, oh, my family member, my other family members should just call me. I shouldn't have to call them or I shouldn't have to. You know what I mean? Like there's there's mothers that they miss their kids, but they're too damn prideful to call their kids because they feel like I'm the mother. I'm 50 something years older or whatever or 40 something years older than a kid. The kid should submit to me. The kid should call me. If you miss your fucking kid, call him, call her like, you know what I mean? Like. You know, and then get mad at your kid because, you know, maybe they've been busy. Maybe they've been, you know, like whatever it is, you know, um, whatever they've been doing, you know, and some mothers or some fathers are probably bitter because now that the kid has their own kids and their own family, they kind of like moved on and they don't really keep in touch as much unless they need something, you know, and that's just the that's the nature of a lot of people, you know, like a lot of people just aren't going to keep up. You know what I'm saying? Unless they need something. Not everybody's like that, but a lot of people are, you know? So, um, so yeah, you know, and so I could imagine how some parents feel. They probably start feeling like, damn, I raised these damn kids and did everything for them up to the age of 21 or 29 or 20 or 30 or whatever, however old. And now these kids can't even call or they can't even, you know what I'm saying? So when people start falling apart because their kids are not calling them anymore and feeling like, damn, like I want to talk to my kid, but... Nah, like I'm, I'm too much. I'm too, I'm too proud to call. It's like, yo, call them, man. You know, um, because if they randomly die, like you're going to regret all the time you sat on your ass waiting for people to call you as if just because you're 35 years older and you know, some call, I like to call old people pride, old people, man. They swear that 
the whole world owes them respect or as if you know as if you being on this planet 40 years longer than me is supposed to mean something to me you know what i'm saying like doesn't mean i owe you something or i mean i just don't i don't i don't see it that way but anyways there's so many people that want to talk to somebody but they don't want to make the phone call you want to have a conversation but you don't want to initiate it you want to you know what i'm saying it's like it just i don't get it you know like what's the point of wanting something if you're not even willing to put in an effort for it it's no different than wanting to piss but you won't get up to go piss use the bathroom you know you want a meal but you don't want to prepare it you don't want to order food you don't want to spend money you don't so you don't want to eat then if you don't want to you know what i'm saying you don't want to so yeah man like if you're in a crisis don't think that just because your friends are compassionate or considerate that they're going to just notice that you're in a crisis even though you've been telling them about it like maybe they're just not in the mood to give you money for whatever reason you know like sometimes they are withholding their blessings you know sometimes it's not even that sometimes they just you know they hear you talking about your problems but they're waiting for you to ask you know so like i said like you know you might you might think it's ridiculous that god knows all your needs but yet you still have to ask god what you need and ask for it and then you will receive you know and like i said with people it's like it's like that much more and sometimes people they 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 try to underestimate what they need and they think that's a humbling thing you know like you need 150 dollars, but you ask for 45 because you don't want to be a burden you know what i'm saying and then the person keeps telling you yo if you need more if you need more let me know like you know if you need 200 i got you they might say yo if you need 300 i got you you only need 150 and you're asking for 45 you know and then you you get 45 right then you get exactly what you asked for and then you get mad that they didn't keep pushing the issue like yo i saw this one video right now, actually, it was an episode of something. I was It was like 13 Reasons Why or whatever. And this damn girl, like, it was about to have sex or whatever. And she kept saying, yo, get off me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. So the guy got off her and he respected her wishes and didn't touch her and whatever. And then she stormed out of the room and she closed the door and she has the door closed behind her. And, like, her back is leaning on, a, on the door. And she's waiting for this dude to come be considerate towards her and to come chase her and come hold her hand and say, no, please, and have a conversation and shit. And it's like, how was he supposed to? And she's mad that he didn't do that. It's like, how was he supposed to know that that's what you wanted? And when you express to him, don't fucking touch me, you know, and then he respects your wishes. And then you're like, yo, but damn, he should have chased me, though. Like, you're not supposed to let me walk out the room without you demanding a conversation. And it's like, yo, but how many times do dudes do that? And it should just go sideways and they end up in court for trying to pursue like you know what i mean so it's like yo the the dude only understands what you say you know like if you you know so people are not in your head it's such a prideful thing to think that you should just be understood when you especially when you don't want to communicate you know why should people just understand you why should people take extra initiative to understand the shit that you're not expressing because they should just you know you know like people when people say shit like yo, i shouldn't tell you I, I shouldn't have to tell you how i feel you should just know how i feel like that's a stupid ass statement that has the power to end marriages you know what i'm saying like so many miserable couples and just people in general that they feel like they should just be understood or man i thought we was on that level or i thought we understood each other or i thought and it's like yo sometimes you're not on the level you think you are sometimes you don't have the understanding with another person you think you have you know sometimes it's not that deep you know sometimes the person you consider your best friend they consider you an acquaintance, even though you're such a fan of them. They're not as much of a fan as you, um, to you as you are to them. They never express that to you, you know. So you assume the feeling is mutual, not realizing that it's not. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and people getting mad at, you know, you, you'll get mad at someone who doesn't have the same common courtesy that you have, and it's like, yo, you were the two of you were raised in two different households. You know, like you might think that it's you 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 might think that it's courteous that. You know, before you get in your vehicle, you open up the door for the woman first and let her her in. And then you open up your side afterwards. Like that might be a courteous thing to you. Or, you know, it might be a girl that grows up and all the guys in her life do that for her. And then she meets one guy that doesn't and takes it so personal that his level of common courtesy, that, that shit wasn't taught to him. Like he's like, you know, he just gets in a car and he opens it up, you know, from the other side and or whatever. Like, you know, so I don't know. Um, So, yeah, man. Um. I've even I've had people in my family that they be feeling like that. Like I shouldn't have to tell you how I feel or I shouldn't have to my family really believes like, you know, like I'm the type of dude, yo, if I see you now, like if I see someone lifting something heavy and they're damn near dying to like try to lift it, or, like, yeah, I don't mind helping them if I have if I so happen to notice, right? But I've had family members try to fucking yell at me because I wasn't 
they thought I was being inconsiderate. You know what I'm saying? Like they thought I was standing around just watching them struggle. And it's like, dude, you're strong. I didn't know that that shit was a struggle. I didn't know you needed assistance. You know what I mean? And the way I feel currently, you know, my mindset might change one day. But I really feel like if you're too proud to ask for help, you're, you're, you're too proud to receive it then. You don't need my help if you're not asking for it. You know what I'm saying? And maybe this, maybe part of that is like me projecting, you know? Because for me, one thing I don't like is when people just, I, I don't really like when people just offer me assistance that I did not ask for. You know what I'm saying? Because I meet so many people that they want to be glorified in the good deeds that they do. And they just want to, you know what I'm saying? They want to use it as a manipulation tactic to now get something out of me now that they did something for me or remind me of what they did in future events, man. I, you know, I've lived with a person that did that a lot of times, you know what I mean? And then we wonder why we're so uh, cynical towards people that want to give us something because we always believe there's a hidden agenda. There, we believe there's a secret motive. Like you're not giving for my sake. You're giving so that you could say that you gave me something so that later on you could get something out of me. You know what I'm saying? Like... And so many people that do that, so many people that they're not giving from the kindness of the heart or their heart. You know what I'm saying? They're giving from the root is rooted in expectation. You know what I mean? It's rooting in, in, in them now wanting something from you now that they received something, you know? And that's why so many people, you might notice you want to give somebody a gift and they're not, they don't receive it easily or it's hard for them to receive. And that's probably why. What's up? What's up, Alex? And that's probably why, you know, because so many people use it as a manipulation tactic, you know? So yeah um you know i talk about entitlement a lot man i remember one time <laughs> i was at like a it was like a thanksgiving or a christmas event or something and there was a there was a family there and they were selling um they were selling something in a catalog i don't know what it was but this person really felt entitled towards getting money from the family oh family should just support other family uh business you know and it's like it's like yo should family support your product if your product is crap just for the sake of saying they support you then that's not genuine support that's just them supporting because they feel like they should but you know like the best support to receive is you know what i mean like right, i'll give you an example i know some artists is that they they whine and complain every time somebody doesn't like their song right so if you do that enough times, you might make people feel like they have to lie to you so that they don't have to hear your whining. Now, every time you perform a song, people are giving you a false sense of, oh, I like it. Oh, it's cool. And it's like they don't like your song at all. They just want you to think that so they don't have to hear you whine about, oh, why don't you like it or why this and demand an explanation. You know what I mean? So, you know, now you get a false sense of, you know, like them giving you a thumbs up, you know, but really they, they just trying to silence you because they don't they ain't trying to have that extra conversation of you having to exp them having to explain to you why they don't like your, your your music your art or whatever it is that you do you know what i'm saying so i don't know for me like if somebody doesn't like something i do like i just don't even i don't even ask why really you know because i i'm not i'm not desperate for one single individual to like something that i do anyways you know i know anything that i like if i like it there's a million people that like the same thing whatever it is you know what i'm saying like whatever it is you could think of that you like there's at least one million and that's its understatement it's way more than one million people that like the same you know if there's one person that likes eminem there's a million if there's one person that likes taylor swift there's 10 million like you know what i'm saying so so yeah man anyways um you you can't expect that someone's just gonna understand you you know and you don't want to talk they're so prideful to think that that you should just be understood you know what i mean and then getting mad at people that don't pick up on the nuances or the signs that you give you know what i'm saying like it's like yo bro like you're trying to talk in sign in sign language to someone that speaks plain english and getting mad at them for not speaking sign language and it's like bruh like they don't speak that you know what i'm saying they don't you know whatever level of compassion you're expecting people to have people don't operate according to your standards you know there's so many people that different rules govern their life different things govern their behavior the way they act what's moralistic and what their principles are shit is different for different people depending on their mindset, you know? So, you know, one of the worst things a person could do is assume that people, uh, that, you know, the worst thing you could do is assume that people think the way that you do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember one time I was, uh, I was, um, it was a PlayStation like group. It was like 50 people, 75. It was a lot of people in there and you could do like 15 second voice clips. So I'll go in there sometimes and I'll do voice clips about my day or things that I learned or things that really impacted my life. And I had this one guy 
try to be like, yo, like no one cares about what you're saying. And it's like, you don't care what I'm saying, but there's 75 people in here. Like, don't think just because there's a bunch of people not responding directly to what I'm saying that it's not relevant to anybody in here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just, just make, like nothing wrong. I'm not mad at the dude for telling me he doesn't care about my shit. That's fine. I feel like people have the right to, to say that what I'm saying is stupid or trash or whatever, like whatever your opinion, who am I to say that you don't, you don't have the right to an opinion. You know what I'm saying? But the thing was, he was trying to impose that on 75 other people. And it's like, you're not inside the minds of other people. Don't assume that other people think the way you do. It's the worst assumption you can make is to think that just because something is trash to you, it's going to be trash to everybody else. There's there's a million things that I could think of that are trash to me that I, I'm not naive enough to think that it's going to be trash to everybody else. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I say this all the time, how much I hate Minecraft, you know? But that's okay because that game wasn't created for me to like, like somebody's going to like that game, you know, it's just not me, like, I'm not going to be the one that likes that game, because it's not for me, so, you know, this guy was like, he would post his voice clips, and he'd be like, yeah, that's nice, Rob, Rob, but no one really cares, or no, I don't think anyone really listens, or I don't think anyone, and it's like, yo, bro, don't, don't impose your belief system onto 75 other people, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, so, I mean, you could if you want, but just, you're not, you know, you're not correct in doing that. You're, that's not a good assumption to think that, you know how many people 75 people is and to think that they all going to be against one thing just because you're against it, you know? So, um, I remember this one guy, his conviction was uh, secular music. He was like, oh, no one should listen to that. And he tried to push his conviction on people or how he feels like, oh, well, if I, if I can't do it, you shouldn't be doing it. Or if I can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I remember this one kid, he was like 10 years old. And, you know, I, I remember I asked him like, yo, how come when I'm in the bathroom, you'd be rushing me out of the bathroom? He was like, well, my parents rush me. So, you know, kind of saying like, so because my parents do it to me, I'm gonna do it to other people. And it's like, bro, like, you're not my parent. You're fucking 10 years old. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't impose that shit onto me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just because your parents run, first of all, they're, they're rulers over you. You're not a ruler over me. You know what I'm saying? But these are the things that he's, he doesn't understand. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, you know, a lot of kids, they'll just, whatever behavior they, they pick up on, they just apply it to everything and everyone, not understanding the principles behind it. I remember one time I was at a friend's house and I wasn't at the dinner table. Uh, I came to the dinner table like 30 minutes later after food was prepared. And I don't know if this person's dad was offended or bothered, but you know, he really wanted me at the table because he didn't want his dad to be offended, you know, and this is, this is the shit that I always talk about in podcasts, you know, instead of catering to somebody's feelings, how about teaching them how to see when you don't know how to not be offended, you won't know how to teach that to somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like we try to cater to each other's brokenness and make sure that everybody upholds a certain standard for the sake of one person being okay. And it's like, nah, let's teach people how to be okay, regardless of circumstances not panning out the way that we want to. You know what I'm saying? Because when we're not a bunch of weak ass people, we don't need circumstances to be ideal in order for us to be good. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so I don't know, like for me personally, um, what's up, what's up, Dwayne? I can't imagine me cooking. Uh, I know this is gonna, some people, you know, I understand when some people get offended at this, you know, you cook dinner for somebody and it's been 30 minutes and they're not at the table yet. You feel like that's a slap in the face. You know, you feel like, yo, how dare me prepare this meal? And then you take your sweet ass time getting to the table. The only way you could feel like that is if you're not being considerate towards what's going on with the person. Like, what if they're depressed? What if they're having a very important conversation? What if, they're, you know, and, it's, uh, and like, and you got to ask yourself, is it a daily occurrence? You know what I'm saying? Because I remember one time I was at a friend's house. I was always at the dinner table on time. There was one time that I wasn't. You know, you know how it is, man. Like, you know, you do 99 things correctly. They don't remember the 99 things you did correctly. They remember the one time that you fucked up. You know, I saw this one quote that was like, you know, if you have a good experience, you might tell seven people about it. If you have a bad experience, you might tell 47 people about it. You know, like, why is it that we're quicker to blog about the negative shit that happens to us than we are about the good? Because the negative shit is what we repeat in our minds over and over and over. It's crazy how somebody could offend you one time 
and they might as well have did it 57 times because you're going to feel the effects of it happening 57 times if you reimagine it that many times. It's like it happened to you that many times. You know what I'm saying? And we wonder why we have so much trouble with unforgiveness is because you repeat the offense in your mind and you keep repeating to yourself how it should have never occurred in the first place and you shouldn't even be in a position where you should be contemplating whether you forgive a person or not because they should have been within their right mind to not violate you the way that they did. And that's why unforgiveness is hard for you because all you know how to do is repeat offenses in your mind instead of not holding people so accountable towards what they did wrong and understanding having empathy towards people and realizing yo like not everybody's going to be within their right mind you know what i'm saying like if someone's trying to we take it so personal someone tries to put us down you know you don't realize people someone who's trying to put you down they're below you already they're already beneath you for them to put, try to put you down, like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying they're beneath you in terms of their scum, their shit, or they're never going to be anything. Because I think people have ridiculous potential, everybody, regardless of what their social status is or how much money they have or what, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, one of the greatest things my stepdad taught me was when you see a bum in the street, don't treat him like a bum. That man is not a bum. Like, he's just going through some things. But he doesn't have any less value than anybody else that has a suit and tie on. You know, just because he's panhandling in a train doesn't mean he's a piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just means that he needs help. He needs guidance. He needs he needs something. You know what I'm saying? He needs more than just for people to give him money and feel sorry for him. He needs somebody to teach him some things that maybe along the way of life he just never learned for whatever reason. You know, we spend so much time being disgusted by people. And being disgusted doesn't help the people that you're disgusted by. You know what I'm saying? Casting judgments and shit, like, it doesn't help. You know what I'm saying? It just, you just flare your nostrils up at people as if you're above them, as if you're guilty of doing nothing wrong. And you'll never have what it takes to want to help another human being because you're too busy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, for example, I know this, this bothers a lot of people, people who collect Section 8 government checks or, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're mad that people live like that. That has nothing to do with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, why does it matter to you that people collect a check? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't you know life is a numbers game? There's like life is statistics. There's going to be a, there's always going to be a percentage of people that collect a government check and do nothing with their life, die and don't know what the hell they were created for. That percentage of people is always going to exist. So for you to get disgusted and be naive as if this world should conform to the way that you think it should operate. It's like, nah, humans don't wake up in the morning to do what you think they should be doing. People wake up and do what the fuck they feel like doing, whatever that is. And sometimes what people feel like doing goes directly against your set of preferences. You know what I'm saying? But I don't have a preference for how I think other men should live. You know what I'm saying? Like, do I believe in Jesus? Yeah. Do I believe in the Bible? Yeah. Do I think that every man should listen to the Bible? Well, you know, I'd be naive to think that because even the Bible says that the, the you know, like the path that leads to light, like everlasting life is narrow. You know, why does the path that leads to destruction. So if I sat here and got mad at people that don't want to listen to God, first of all, people have free will. You know what I'm saying? Like you're under no obligation to listen to God. Like, are there benefits to listening to God or in doing things a certain way? Of course there's benefits. You know what I'm saying? Am I going to try to sell benefits? Like sell some damn benefit package. Like I'm part of a company. It's like, you know, and that's why a lot like religion, a lot of people want nothing to do with it because we sell it like we're salesmen trying to sell somebody a product that they don't believe in. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you got, I understand how non-believers feel. You know, I understand that they look at people in the church and they're disgusted. If you're disgusted by a whole set of like a whole religion, you don't want nothing to do with them. You don't want to go in their church. You don't want to hear their doctrine because you already have your preconceived notion of what you think religion is. You don't want to hear that shit, you know? Plus you've probably been hurt by religion. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think the devil cares that people go to church. You know what I'm saying? I think sometimes the devil even wants people to go to church so he could blind them with religion so they could identify with what they're a part of instead of trying to look like God and display his character in their own hearts in their own life. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that like there's a scripture in the Bible that says if you don't love, you don't even know God, you know? And it doesn't say that you don't preach sermons. It doesn't say that you don't go to church. It doesn't it doesn't say that you don't understand your need for a savior or whatever. It doesn't say none of that. It just says if you don't love, you don't know God because God is love. You know what I'm saying? Like anyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Anyone who doesn't love doesn't know God. You know what I'm saying? But people think they know God because they go to church as if going to church is godliness. And it's like, nah, like displaying God's characteristics in your life is godliness. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when I meet people, I don't even have to ask them what they believe, if they believe in God or not. 
because it, it's only a matter of time before their life reveals to me what the hell they believe. Like people are so quick to say what they are or what they're about. And it's like, yo, your actions are going to expose everything that you are. You know what I'm saying? Like I just sit back and observe, like, you know, let people think that they are what they think they are, what they say they are, you know, but you know, your life will always reveal what your belief system is. And I think that's what it means to actually believe something is to act out what you believe in. Because if you say you're all about giving and caring and being kind, but yet there's no evidence of that in your life, then the, the evidence or the lack of that is what tells me what you believe, not your, you know what I'm saying, your Christian confession or not your, you know what I'm saying, the things that you tell me you believe. But anyways, so getting back on a topic, what the hell was the topic? Let me see. Okay, yeah, you want to be understood, but you don't want to talk. Yeah, so anyways, yeah, there's so many people who struggle with this, man. They've, here's why I, I believe. I, I believe it's because we want to say shit, but we feel like we'll, we'll be ruffling some feathers by saying it, you know? You feel like you'll start a war by saying that you don't like something that somebody does. So for the sake of maintaining a false sense of peace, you, you have a husband or, or a wife or whatever, and there's shit that she's been doing for five to ten years that you still haven't spoke about. You know, and everybody in your family knows how you feel about that situation besides your wife, because you feel like your wife is too sensitive to talk to or she's going to explode or your husband's going to explode or whatever it is. You know, and what I notice about people, this, this is why you got to put people in a comfortable position to be able to talk to you. Yo, when people feel like they could talk to you, they'll come to you and talk to you. When people feel like they can't talk to you because you're way too, too, too damn fucking sensitive and you're going to take everything wrong and cry and start a war just because you have an opinion on their lifestyle or their habits or what they do. You know what I'm saying? Here, here's what's going to happen. Like if your girlfriend is disgusted by you, everybody else is going to know that except you. You'll be the last person to know how disgusted she is with your behavior. And you think that everything is good because she's never expressed that she's disgusted with you. But yet all of her friends know and even all of your friends know how she feels about you. You know, and you might think that's messed up. Like, damn, well, how come she can't tell me? Well, if you made yourself out to be a person that people could come to and freely talk to, don't you think she would talk to you? She doesn't talk to you because she thinks that she can't. Because she thinks that as soon as she talks about the things that your insufficiencies, the first thing you're going to do is point out her insufficiencies and make it a battle and make it a war and make it, oh, you want to talk about me? Well, what about these things you're doing? What about that? And, you know, trying to take the uh, spotlight off of you because you can't handle being in the spotlight. And every time you feel like you're in it, you try to put the spotlight back on a person that's putting it on you, you know, feeling so condemned by people's words and you know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, why, why are we so sensitive like that in the first place? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, wh when did it become cool? To be so sensitive that we can't express anything to each other because of the sake of how someone's going to feel. You know what I mean? And it's like, I'd much rather people tell me the truth. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, like, man, like, like if you ask, if you ask your boyfriend, do I look fat in his dress? You better be prepared for him to. <laughs> I saw this one video. This guy was like, yo, you know, um, I, I think his wife asked him that and he was like, I don't want to answer that question because I know what it's going to lead to. And I think his wife instantly knew what he wanted to say, even though he didn't express it. But yeah, man, you know, when people are comfortable talking to you, you know, they'll come and talk to you, you know, but back to back to people that don't want to express how they feel because it, they feel like it's going to be friction, you know. It might not be no reason that they feel like that, you know, and sometimes people are a product of their past. Like sometimes, yo, a person's been in seven or eight different relationships and every time they express that one specific issue, let's say it's been the same reoccurring issue seven, eight different times in all relationships, you know, even though it's never been a problem to express how they feel, they take all the pain and hurt and offenses from other relationships and they impose that shit onto a new relationship that has nothing to do with the last seven to eight per people that they dated. You know what I'm saying? So they, they in, in their mind, they assume since the last eight people reacted a certain way that the, the man that they're currently with is going to react a certain way as if that man is all eight people that this person used to be with. And it's like, yo, like we're, we're always assuming that because it happened a certain amount of times that people are going to react or people are going to act like this, or it's like, yo, you don't know how someone's going to react all the time, you know, like, you know, even when you think, you know, you have no idea, you know, I read this quote that says a man that predicts the future, even if he's correct, he's lying, because it didn't happen yet, you know what I mean, and it's like, yo, like, you, you got to get up to that point first, and just have the conversation, see where it goes, you know, but I understand, like, you know, because I, yo, I've had people, right, I've met people that they ask, they ask for feedback, they feel like, yo, if I'm a piece of shit, tell me that because I want to become the best version of myself. And then it's like when there's times when it's like, yo, dude, you're, you're being a piece of shit. Like now they don't want to hear it, you know, 
And and I, I saw a quote the other day. I posted it the other day, actually. It was like, yo, it's always the truth that could set a man free. That's always the truth that a man doesn't want to hear. It's the truth that could po- potentially set him free. You know what I mean? Because it's always uncomfortable or it rubs you wrong or we focus on tonality and how things are being said. And, you know, that's why we can't receive anything that's being said because we focus on how it's being said and how it shouldn't be said or whatever. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man, like, don't think that people should just know. It it doesn't matter that you've known somebody for 10 years. I don't know what level of rapport you think you have with somebody. Don't ever be too proud that you can't communicate exactly how you feel or think that things should just be understood like it's an unwritten rule or unwritten contract or something or agreement or it's like, yo, like nobody, we're, nobody's a mind reader. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody's going to just know how you feel, especially if you're too proud to express it. And then when you go on being misunderstood, it's going to be your fault, you know, and you're going to blame it on people that they don't have enough empathy. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes we get mad at people that don't have our hearts. You know, you get mad at people that don't have your level of sympathy, your level of enthusiasm, your level of understanding. And then you condemn them in your mind mentally and judge them and then cut them off accordingly just because you cut them off where you're dissatisfied with their behavior because you feel like they should be more empathetic. They should be sympathetic. They should be whatever it is. And it's like they don't have your heart. They don't have your soul. They don't have your upbringing. They don't have your mentality. They don't have the justifications that you have that enables your behavior to be so pure hearted. Like maybe they're not as pure hearted as you are. You know what I'm saying? And we take that so personally that people are not like us. You know, I know this one guy that wishes the whole world was the same. And I know why he wishes that because his life would be easier. It'd be convenient for him. I'm sure he hates it when he tells a corny ass joke that nobody laughs at and takes it personally. Like, and he's like, oh man, well, if we were all the, if we were all alike, we'd have the same humor. We'd have the, you know what I'm saying? This person I'm talking about, I remember one time he asked me, he's like, oh, so have you purchased a sense of humor? Have you bought a sense of humor? And it's like, I have a sense of humor, dude. I just don't have your sense of humor. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so this, this guy, like, I know he spends a lot of time in his mind judging people that are not like him. And people that are like that, they're never fucking happy because all they know how to do is view things, is, is look at things for how disgusted they are by the things that they're disgusted by. And that's all they focus on is shit that they're disgusted by instead of focusing on things that are worth their time, such as what's my life purpose? What the fuck am I supposed to do before I die? Like I have a limited time on earth. It'd be nice to find out what the hell I was created for if there's a God, like, you know, religion, like, you know, all the stuff that we neglect that we think doesn't matter, such as God. All of a sudden, if you had 10 minutes to live, there's so many things that didn't matter to you because you thought you had so much time to live. And even though people are dying, you know, it's something about time, man. I don't I don't know. Something about time that gives us a delusion of time, you know, because we're 29 or, or, or 25 or 31. You know, we think that we have 50 years and it's like, bro, you might die in your sleep tonight. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't know what the hell you came for, then that means you mean you made your life about everything that it's not about, such as rumors and why don't people return your text? And why don't people love you? And how come family doesn't act like family? And how come other people doesn't have morals? You know, if you pay attention to why people are so frustrated, it's always them pointing out another human being's ins- insufficiencies. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, yo, the best thing you could do to try to have impact on, on this world, positive impact, if that's what you're about, is to be the change that you want to see in this world instead of complaining about the changes that other people refuse to make. Because some people are just n- not within that mentality to be the difference that you want to see in this world. You know, we uphold other people to such a standard. And it's like, yo, the, the best thing I could do is uphold myself to a standard and be the best version of myself because I have zero control over what you want to do or how wicked you are or how twisted you are or how you should be better or how, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the naivete for me to even think that you know to focus my energy on how you should be better and it's like yo what about me what about the shit that i should be doing like there's areas in my life that i'm insufficient at there's areas in my life that i could be working on you know what i'm saying so i'm not gonna impose on on people what i think they should be doing you know what i'm saying it's like yo there's stuff that i should be doing better you know what's up what's up i made so yeah you know, and there's nothing wrong with talking to friends and having a conversation and giving them a pep talk and telling them that they're capable of more. But, you know, just make sure you spend more time working on yourself than you do criticizing men that don't care about self-development, that don't care about getting a job. That they don't mind living off Section 8 and government assistance and government checks all their life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know some people that have jobs. They think they're so above people that don't. You know what I'm saying? And they, they you know, and you got to realize you feeling like that. It's self-destructive towards you, you know what I'm saying? Because the people that don't have jobs, they don't care that you don't like their position. They feel like you're a sucker for going to work because what you what you work your ass to get, they sit on their ass and get for free from the government. So they feel like you're a sucker and you feel like they're a sucker because you feel like, yo, why are people lazy or why are people this and why is my tax money going to this person and why... 
And it's like, bro, there's so many shit, so much shit we complain about. This none of our business. You know, it's not my business that my tax dollars go to enable people to be lazy. Their laziness has nothing to do with me. You know what I'm saying? And what am I going to do? Get mad at your laziness as if me getting mad at you changes you. You know what I'm saying? Like, because at the end of the day, if you choose to continue being that way, people are going to do what they're going to do. You know what I'm saying? So I've learned not to have an emotional connection to fucking people's behavior, you know, or an expectation to how I think people should be like. You know, of course, if we were all loving, compassionate and considerate, this world would be a much better place. You know what I'm saying? And selfishness is probably the biggest problem that this world has. Everything that we complain about, it's somebody else's behavior rooted in selfishness. You know what I'm saying? And if they change that, if they stop being selfish, you know, and I, I've learned from Gary Vee listening to him and I really believe this. The best way to be selfish is to be selfless. You know, when it's not about you, you actually it's a weird way. Like you end up getting exactly what you want. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, Cardi B, right? There was a lot of people she did a song way before she was famous that they fucked her over on her money and robbed her and like, you know, undercut her and all these people. Now they wish that they paid her accordingly because now she remembers all the stuff that they did to her. And now they want a favor. Now that she's popping, like everyone wants to do a song with her. You know what I'm saying? And I bet you everybody who did her wrong wishes they didn't do her wrong because now they could get more out of her. Yo, you get the most out of people when you give your best. You know what I'm saying? The thing is, we worry about what we're going to get back from a person. And that dictates how much we give to a person. It's like, I'm not giving you shit if I'm not getting nothing in return. This is why we don't want to love anybody. Because it's like, if I love you, what's in it for me? Like, which proves that we only love people so that we could receive it. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm going to just love everybody. And I give a fuck who I get it back from. You know what I'm saying? Like, if my own kids don't love me one day, if my own wife doesn't love me one day, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to just love. Not, and you know, not because it's what I expect in return but because that's who i am and that's how i choose to be and i know that the way the universe works like this type of behavior gets rewarded like you know i seen it i see i see it happen you know a lot of people believe nice guys finish last nobody wants to finish last and that's why nobody wants to be a nice guy because it's like yo fuck finishing last you know what i'm saying but it's like nah like you know they 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 finish last in the short term in the short term it seems like bad guys are winning but in the end like good guys always finish first you know what i'm saying like because it's like who are you going to remember more? You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, like if someone someone does you wrong, right, or whatever. Let's say you're not very uh, very forgiving person. Someone does you wrong, like, you know, and then someone, like, was always there for you when you need it. Like, now that you're famous, who are you going to look out for? You're going to look out for the person that was always there for you, that was always edifying, always helped you out with money, always, you know what I'm saying? Like, you might feel a sense of, like, you, you might feel indebted to these people, paying them back for all the good that they, they did for you. You know what I'm saying? Versus someone who, who fucked you over and now they expect, they feel like, oh, now that you made it, you should put me on, you should help me. And it's like, bro, I don't know you. The only time you come around is when you need something, when you want to promote something, when you want me to join your business opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Most people only come around like when they're offended, when they want to clarify a meaningless rumor, you know, when they want you to join their business opportunity, when they're promoting something, when it's self beneficial to them, for them to come around, they come around, but it's never for your sake. It's never to see how you're doing. It's never to, you know what I'm saying? And this is why when people get famous, there's a bunch of people that want to be friends, but it's like, yo, you contributed nothing to the relationship. This is the way people treat God. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the only time people thank God is when it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. That's it. It's the only time they're thanking God on a Friday. You know what I'm saying? But never commune with him and yet want so much from him you know what i'm saying but don't want to have a relationship they just want the benefits of having a relationship without the relationship you know what i'm saying so you get what you give so if you want from people just give without expectation and that's the key because so many people are givers but with expectation and that's why they're always pissed off because they're always weighing the pros and cons of giving or saying yo i give this but what do i get back or i give this much and you give this much and and it's like, yo, it's not fair and complaining that people are not considerate or whatever. And it's like, yo, just give, man. Just trust that the universe is going to pay you back. It will, man. Tenfold. You know what I'm saying? So um, give me a second. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Yeah, so anyways, yeah, man, Um, the best way to be understood is to communicate, you know, um, I know you're worried about someone's going to tell you all oh, the audacity for you to feel like that considering I did this or this didn't you know what I'm saying like I remember yo I wrote a song right which I should probably show you I wrote a song about how disgusted I was with somebody's personality behavior all that shit they felt like I didn't have the right to write that song considering what they did for me they provided me a place to stay 
blah, 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 bought food, did this. They feel like I should have so much appreciation. Here's the thing about life. You don't get to demand how much appreciation you get from a person. People are going to give you what they feel like fucking giving you. And whether you like that or not, that's not their business. That's that's your business. That's your issue. You know what I'm saying? Like, so this is why it's better not to expect anything because when you just give and you have no expectations, in fact, it's hard to be taken advantage of when you're, when you when you give without expectation. We worry about getting taken advantage of because we expect so much in return for whatever it is we think we're giving, you know? So I wrote a song about how I didn't like somebody, right? And I read it to the person. And before I read it, I told them, I said, yo, you got two options. You're going to get offended and you feel like I have no business writing this song about you because you did this for me, you did that. Or number two, which is the better option, the more like, you know, you'll be in a good mental state if you actually take this approach. So again, you be empathetic and you realize, man, I, I made you feel like this or I made you what or I made you like, you know, what I'm saying like, oh, me, when I said this, it, it had this reaction. Like, can you, you know, when you're more critical than you are curious, it's because you're prideful and it, it stops you from growing. You know what I'm saying? Instead of you asking, man, when I said this, why, what explain to me why, how it made you feel or how I could be better or how when you're not humble, you know, what I'm saying and asking people, how can I be a better person? You know, how can I not? offend you or how can i not you know or not necessarily offend or how can i how how can i communicate better whatever it is you know then you're going to spend your time saying well you should get over it well you should be this and you should you know what i'm saying like i got this one friend that he feels like if people don't understand him they should just ask you know and he says it a lot he's like people should just ask man they shouldn't assume that they know what i'm talking about if they're confused why don't they just ask and it's like yo people don't because they won't, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people just won't do what you think they should just do. Like, and it's just, that's how it is, man. Like you can either get mad at reality or learn how to be adaptable, you know? And when you learn how to be adaptable, you're, you're no longer mad at life. Cause you're like, fuck it. When it doesn't pan out my way, I'm an, I'm adapting. I'm an adaptable person. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I could adapt. I don't have to cry about life, not panning out my way. You know what I'm saying? As if I can't, you know, like, it's like, yo, if you see a wall in front of you, what you, what you going to do? Get mad at the wall for being there? Like walk around, fuck. Like, you know what I mean? So this is why we're upset because we don't, we don't feel like we should adapt because life should adapt to us and prideful as hell. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, so yeah, like I've been around people that, oh, wait, hold on. Before I start telling that story, let me go back. So yeah, I wrote this song about someone I didn't like. I showed it to him. I told him, you got two options, either one, get offended and feel like I have no business writing the song about you because it's talking shit about you. And here's the thing, right? This this was a Christian person, like reads the Bible, blah, blah, blah. It was never an issue when I wrote songs talking shit about a bunch of other people. Like it was always cool or yo, those rhymes are hot, those bars. But when I'm writing shit about you specifically, now it's a problem. And it's like, yo, how come you didn't impose the same rules of, yo, it's not, not nice lyrics but you know it's not good to talk bad about people and it's like yo if i'm talking about other people whatever the only time people hate rumors is when it's about them that's when they hate rumors people fucking love rumors when it's about other people oh you're talking shit about other people all right cool oh it's about me nah now it's an issue you know what i'm saying like i know so many people that they spend their life talking shit about other people but yet they feel like no one has the right to say bad things about them and it's like bruh you know what you think you think you're going to talk all you're going to so the only time we here's his what's ironic about people the only time we believe in free speech is when we're the ones talking we don't fucking believe in free speech for the sake of other people for the sake of what they have to say you know what i'm saying like you know so many husbands that you know like their wives they feel bounded they feel like they can't fucking express themselves freely because the husband he believes in free speech only when he's talking but you know but he'll be damned if the wife starts expressing her concerns or how she's dissatisfied or how she doesn't like this or how she doesn't, you know, and it's like, bro, like, come on, man. Like, why, why, why not embrace the same rules for yourself for others? You know, the same, the same liberties, you know, there's some people that they take pride in being offensive and being a bully, but like, God forbid, if that same energy comes right back to you, now it's an issue. That's why me personally, I never, you know, consciously, I never consciously try to put out energy into the or you know even unconsciously because like i'm i just i'm good with people i understand what words lead to what reaction and stuff so i'm just never putting energy into the world that i don't want to receive back ever it doesn't matter what energy i'm receiving from people or how nasty they're acting that's not my issue you know i'm saying like i don't have to have an issue with people just because they have issues you know i'm saying and then i become a product of what they're doing to me instead of a product of what i decide to be you know i'm saying so so yeah man um there's so many families cousins mothers kids whatever 
feeling like, oh, I want to call my girl, but she she should call me. And it's like, yo, you, you're the one that wants to have a conversation. People say this all the time, right? People say shit like, you know, you'll text somebody and be like, yo, call me. Like, yo, you're the one that wants to have a phone call conversation. How come you don't call me? You know what I'm saying? Like, you want to talk on the phone, but you want me to call you. Like, I'm not the one that wants to talk. You're the one that wants to talk. How come you're not the one that's dialing? How come I have to dial when you're the one? You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I would never, I would never want to talk to you, you know? And this is just the, the way I feel, but, you know, everyone has their own viewpoint. But I would never want to have a conversation with you, but yet make you be the one that initiates it. If I want to have the fucking conversation, I'm calling you. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if it's a bad time, like I, when I call people, I don't care. I don't, like, I don't ask questions or whatever. Some some people they they don't like that. They feel like, yo, don't call me randomly. Like, you you better schedule a call. You know? And that's how I know we're not we're not friends. Like, you know? Because if I got to schedule an appointment to fucking talk to you, it's like, yeah, we're not cool, man. You know what I'm saying? We're not we're not that cool. We're definitely acquaintances because. For for me, my real friends, you know what I'm saying? If it's two in the morning, it doesn't matter. Like, call. If you wake me up, it doesn't matter. If, you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever it is, it doesn't matter, you know? When when you have to start scheduling appointments, that, that's how you know that it's <laughs> your friendship with the person really is it's not that deep, you know? But um, because, you know, like, I, I feel like real friendships, don't, they don't have time restrictions. You know what I'm saying? They don't have, like, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, I don't know. So that's, that's just how I feel, you know, about friendship people feel however they feel but um anyways so yeah man um i remember one time i remember one time um my mom was really trying to show me how to cook and i didn't really care about that or about learning or whatever you know what i'm saying and it was bothering her because she was trying to force that shit on me and it's like yo what part don't you understand like i don't care to learn how to cook right now like i, I got money i could just order food you know what I'm saying? She was worried about, you know, this and that. And, you know, she didn't really have empathy towards my point of view. She was just like, yo, you have to fucking learn how to cook because for the sake of her not worrying so it could relieve a burden off of her shoulders. You see, like everything we do is always for our sake so that we could be good. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, but, I, you know, I'm sure it was. Yeah, she, she worried about my health, too. Like, yo, making sure you're eating the right food and this and that. But, you know, what I'm saying the reason that we want people to do shit a specific way is so that we don't worry Yo, make sure you call me, like, you know, let's say your friend leaves your house, you know, and you'll be like, yo, call me as soon as you get home at 8 p.m. You know, you know that it takes, it's 7.30 now, it takes 30 minutes for them to get there. You know, by the time it's 8.05, they don't call you. you the first thing you assume is they might have died in a car accident. Why, why do we do shit like that? We put so much pressure on people to fucking, yo, call me so that, so that I'm okay. You know what I'm saying? It's always for our sake that we do shit. Like, I remember one of my ex-girlfriends... She apologized for something she did to me, not so that she could be sorry, just so that it could relieve tension from her life because she was, she felt, she literally told me I was losing sleep over this shit, not apologizing to you. So I feel like I have to. So why did she apologize to me so that she could regain the sleep that she was losing? It's not because she's actually sorry. It's not because, you know what I'm saying? It's just so that she could relieve a burden from her shoulders. You know what I'm saying? Like, so anyways, um, one time I, I told my mom, I'm like, yo, if I want to learn how to cook, I'll just Google it. That offended her so much. Here's why she got offended. She didn't, she felt like I didn't have the right to say that. We feel like no one has rights. That's why we're so fucking offended at people's free speech or how they use their communication or how they proceed with life and do however, you know what I'm saying? Like, because we have so many restrictions on what we think people are not supposed to do. And when someone violates those restrictions, those laws that you uphold, that they probably have your life bounded, but the same rules and regulations don't apply. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we, yo, we, religious people, you meet not non-believers and you expect them to be godly. It's like, they don't believe in God. Why would you expect them to be godly at all? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why would you believe, why would you meet a satanic person? Right. Let's say someone worships Satan. You know what I'm saying? And, and then you get surprised at some of the rituals they tell you to do or like, and it's like, yo, bro, what do you expect from a Satanist except for them to be a Satanist? Like, you know what I'm saying? What do you expect from an atheist except for them to have non-belief? What do you expect from a cynical person except for them to be cynical? Like, you know what I'm saying? So we, d we just meet a lot of people and then we expect them to be what they're not. You know what I'm saying? For example, you meet gay people, you expect them not to be gay. You know what I'm saying? You meet people that chronically masturbate, you expect them not to do that. And it's like, yo, you know, like people could always change you know, but there's always a chance that people, they just might continue being the way that they are. You know what I mean? So 
Anyways, when I told my mom, if I want to learn how to cook some shit, I'll Google it. It offended her so much because she wanted to be the one that teaches me. She wanted to be the one that shows me how to do this and that. And, you know, and, you know, some of you would argue, yeah, that's not how you talk to your mom. That was wrong, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, yo, that's how I felt. Like, what am I supposed to like? We, we can't we can't communicate how we feel to each other, you know, and I felt like I had to say here's why I feel like I had to say that because she was on my ass about it. Like, yo, learn how to cook, do this, come downstairs, let me teach you. And that's why I had to be very strict, stern, like, no, not strict, uh, like very assertive and say, if I want to learn, I will Google it. Why? So she could get off my ass about it. You know what I'm saying? I felt like that was the only way for her to respect my free will is for me to say, yo, I'm, I'm good. If I want to learn. I'll buy a cookbook or I'll fucking, you know what I'm saying? I'll go on YouTube. I'll watch videos about it. Like, you know, so whether or not that's something, some of you might argue I shouldn't have said that, you know, and this, that's where offense comes from. So when, you know, believing that people can't say certain shit. So that's why when it comes to communication, I, 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 I feel like people, you could freely say however you want, because how else am I going to get any honest feedback from you? Unless I, if I have restrictions on your speech, there might be things that you might be feeling, but since I'm restricting you all over the fucking place, a whole bunch of things that you feel about me that you never tell me. And now everybody else knows how you feel about me, except me. Why? Because I'm so goddamn sensitive that you can't tell me anything. So now you tell how you feel about me to your friends, to my friends, to everybody else knows how you feel about me besides me. That's a, that's a very sad place for me to be in that I'm so sensitive that you can't tell me nothing and you feel like you have to tell other people about me. And then other people tell you, yo, how come you don't tell Rob how you feel? And it's like, yo, I would tell Rob, but his ass is so, he's such a uh, delicate flower that he will fall apart as soon as I start speaking. So I, what, what am I supposed to do? Like, you know what I mean? And people vent, people vent because they feel like they have to get it out. They feel like, how some, you know, like they feel like they're sitting with that. So they have to tell somebody who understands, maybe asking for advice, maybe asking, you know, and here's the thing about life. We make, we get so mad when people tell others, others, how they feel about us. And it's like, yo, how come you went to other people? How come you couldn't tell me? And it's like, yo, I tried to tell you, I tried every time I try to talk to you, you say, I don't want to talk about this shit. Not right now. Not right now. You know, you tell somebody that enough times they're going to talk about it, just not to you, just to everybody else. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, so I never want to be in a position where I can't receive feedback from a person because I'm so whatever that they, I'm, I'm someone that they're incapable of communication, communicating with, you know, sometimes we make ourselves out to be impossible people to talk to. And yet we wonder why no one wants to talk to us when you make yourself an impossible person to talk to by having so much restrictions on people's free speech and what they're quote unquote not allowed to say for the sake of you not being offended for the sake of it's a bunch of landmines that they got to avoid stepping on just to speak to you. You know what I'm saying? Do you know how much of a burden that is for them to even have a, a relationship with you? You know what I'm saying? And then and then you, you're going to be wondering why they cut you off, why they don't talk to you as much. Why? Because here's the thing, man, when it comes to people, you're either an asset to somebody or you're a liability. You're either either something that people rather not deal with or you're something that people can't wait they can't they look forward to you know what i'm saying like when you walk in a room people are excited that you entered the room everyone brings joy to a room either by entering it or by leaving it so either people are celebrating that you just left the fucking room because nobody likes you or people are so excited that you just entered because people can't wait for your arrival because you're the star of the show or you're so nice or you're kind or you're considerate giving whatever it is whatever altruistic characteristics you have that people gravitate towards you know what i'm saying like so yeah anyways so yeah man you know just you got to put people in positions where they feel like they could freely talk to you and then they will and then you'll get so much more from them than if you try to restrict every damn thing you know what i mean so anyways my mom was so offended by that me saying that if i want to learn how to cook i'll google it that she told my brother my brother was mad at me he was like that's not the way you talk to your mom i'm like why is that not the way that we speak it's because we have to worry about fucking offense why is offense all over the place you know what i'm saying here's why because we live for ourselves we live for our you know what i'm saying like our standards need to be met like the way that we think life should be it needs to go that way and anything that violates that we have a problem with but it's not that that we have a problem with. We internally have a problem. First of all, you're naive as hell to think that everybody's going to uphold your standard. Whatever your standard is, where you, whether you believe in God, Buddha, uh, I don't know what you believe in and what you worship and what you celebrate. But, you know, you're going to meet like, like-minded people who agree with your standard. And you're going to meet a bunch of people that don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think the the like the greatest test of life is how you treat people that have an opposing view to you like you know what i'm saying like the, the greatest um test of maturity actually is whether or not 
you're going to lose your mind and get all mad just because someone has a different viewpoint than you. You know what I'm saying? Like not having any empathy towards, first of all, if someone grew up in the Middle East, of course, they're going to praise Allah. Like look where they come from. Everybody else there praises Allah. So it just, it just makes sense that it would be like that, you know, but we'd be like, oh, that's a false God. That's stupid. That blah, blah, blah. And it's like, bro, maybe it is a false God, but to the person worshiping, the per they don't know that. Like, you know what I'm saying? To them it's real because their whole region believes that. And they were, they're indoctrinated into a belief system when you don't have empathy towards people and why they believe a certain thing or what led them to the belief or what, when you have no empathy, you feel like, Oh, it's stupid. It just shouldn't be that way. And it's like, well, it is that way. And then you'll have, you, you won't be able to adapt and have conversations because you're too busy trying to fit people into the mold of what you think should be already instead of you being empathetic empathetic and sympathetic towards what the hell made them like that in the first place you have no consideration towards their upbringings their teachings their you know what i'm saying so i don't know like when someone's from north america and they believe in in jesus that's not surprising to me because most of this region does you know what i'm saying like you know this is this is christian foundation like continent you know what i'm saying so of course there's gonna be a lot of christian people here you know when you meet people that i don't know like people who believe in buddha where they come from but when when you know that the, the statistics of people that come from a certain region are likely to believe in buddha like why do we get surprised when we meet people from that region that have that belief system or they believe in that god or whatever you know what i'm saying and calling somebody's belief system stupid it doesn't do anything towards getting them to believe in what you believe in it just makes them frustrated because for right now even if what somebody believes is true for as long as they believe it's true, it is true to them. It's their subjective truth as far as they're concerned. Now, it might not be truth in terms of reality and what's actually true, but they don't know that because their truth is all they know. And what they perceive as truth, even though you perceive it as falsehood, you calling their truth stupid does nothing to teach them. You know what I'm saying? And I saw a quote the other day that was like, you know, if I'm wrong, don't undermine me and talk to me like shit educate me teach me you know if i'm wrong you know and that's that's the that's the problem when people are wrong we don't care to educate each other we just want to talk to each other like shit for having a certain belief system we don't want to teach we just want to we want to get disgusted by what their current belief system is and be like yo how could you believe that and that's stupid and it's like all right bro like you know and it's like and then you don't even know what you're doing when you talk to people like that it's making them not want to be around you because you're probably a extremist when it comes to your viewpoints and all you care about is getting your point across and not understanding where someone else is coming from you know what i mean so anyways i went on a tangent a bunch of random stuff but i hope that some of it was helpful probably gonna go soon so yeah man it was just on my heart like at first i was gonna do this podcast about jealousy and people that struggle with jealousy so i guess i'll throw that in while i'm at it you know maybe like in 10 minutes i'm leaving or something like that but yeah jealousy you know like when you don't carry your own load, you know, like really carry a, a load so big that you could barely even stand from trying to hold up all your responsibilities and things that you're supposed to do. And when you don't, when, when you have idle time, you have time to be jealous. You have time to be fucking cynical. You have time to look at what the next man has and feel like the world owes you that as if you're entitled to receiving it. You know, so many people that want more money. The next podcast I do, I'll probably talk about money on that one. You want more money. But you don't want to become more valuable to the marketplace. And then you want to get mad at rappers or whoever the hell, like the cash me outside. How about that girl? And you want to look at people that have millions of dollars and feel like they're not qualified to have it. But it's like, guess what? The marketplace says that they are qualified. So that's why they have it. Because millions of people agree with them being valuable. Therefore, they become valuable because from the subjective point of view of millions of people, they are valuable. Like... Whatever ce celebrities are out there that you consider retarded, that you think are normal people or that you think should be working at Wendy's or McDonald's because they're not worth anything. If the millions of people, let's say they have five million fans, if their five million fans had the same viewpoint, they wouldn't be famous. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't. You know, there's a reason that they have followers, you know, and some people get followers for stupid stuff. I, I, I get what you're trying to say. You're like, yo, how is that relevant? You know, well, here, here's the thing, though. I'm not a fan of ASMR videos, but yet those videos are popping on YouTube. There's some professional ASMRs that make so much money doing that, whispering into a mic politely and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's actually a career. There's another guy on YouTube. He takes iPhones and samsung galaxies and he he puts them like in a blender or like a, a he crushes them and he make he gets millions of views doing that there's another guy he takes a gun and he'll load up like like 18 watermelons in a row and he'll shoot a bullet through them and try to see where the bullet stops like at what watermelon was the bullet lodged into 
And that dude gets millions of, that's his career. You know what I'm saying? Shooting a hole, lining up a bunch of objects and shooting a hole into it. Yeah, who would have thought that's a career? Like, you know what I'm saying? So whether or not that's valuable to you, you know what I'm it doesn't bring you value, but to the millions of people watching what you consider ridiculous, it's valuable to the people that value ridiculous shit. You know what I'm saying? So when you don't have empathy towards what other people like, you'll feel like shit is stupid and it shouldn't be that way. Why? Because life is not living up to your standard of what's smart and what's reasonable and what's, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, people don't care that you think something is stupid. People like what they like. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, cat videos probably shouldn't be as popular as they are. They probably shouldn't have millions of views, but it's like, yo, but who am I to say that though? Because they did get millions of views, which means to the marketplace, which is all the viewers on YouTube, you know, cat videos are just popular. That's just how it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's, it's always going to be a, a, and people get mad. They say shit like this. They'd be like, I can't believe a, a, a video of a cat skateboarding gets four billion views but yet there's a guy that's trying to educate the world and he gets twenty thousand views and it's like that's just the way the world is like people value nonsensical things for whatever reason you know what i'm saying but i can't tell somebody that something they value is not valid well i could say that but me saying that doesn't change the fact that it's valuable to them like as much as i hate minecraft i can't find an individual that loves it and try to convince them, oh why do you like that bullshit game like you shouldn't like that game like yo me saying that you shouldn't like something does it prevent you from liking it you know what i'm saying like let's say that you're gay i'll come up to you like yo you shouldn't be gay and you're like okay like i'm still gay though like what do you want me to not be gay for your sake you know what i mean like yo telling someone that they shouldn't be gay doesn't convert them into being straight you know what I'm saying? Like saying, telling someone they shouldn't like video games. You know, people do this a lot. They'd be like, you know, you'll be like, yo, I'm depressed. People are like, oh, you shouldn't feel that way. And it's like, thanks, genius. If only I thought about how I shouldn't feel like that, would you think I like being depressed? Like, when does telling somebody how they shouldn't feel, how how does that help them? You know what I'm saying? How does that help them through what they're getting through? It's like, yo, teach, teach somebody how to f not feel depressed. But it's like, these are the things that if you don't know, you know, if, if you don't know how to have inner peace, you'll never be able to spread that to the world. If you don't know how to not be offended, then when people are, then you're going to just have to deal with people's offenses and normalize it and just be understanding and real. You know what I'm saying? Instead of telling people that, yo, it's possible to not live in offense anymore when you don't live for your standard to be uphold, upheld by other people as if other people are created with you in mind, you know, as if other people are here to meet your standard, as if you're Lord and Savior over this planet or something. And it's like, bro, who are you? You know what I'm saying? Like, even God himself doesn't expect everybody to uphold his standard. You know what I'm saying? But that's what comes with free will, because with free will comes the option to defy God. It comes the option to go the other way. You know what I'm saying? And the more you respect people's free will to be fucking weird or whatever, like the more you'll stop being disgusted by and, you know, and you'll probably have less time to do that when you focus on your own shit, your own goals, your own dreams, the things that you want to manifest, the things that you want to do before you die, because your time here is limited on earth. And if you spend all your time getting mad at how people use their time, how is you getting mad at how people use their time a good use of your time? It's not, you know what I'm saying? Like, and if you think it is, stop it. Like, I don't know which one of you are doing that, but cut it out. Like thinking that you know what i'm saying like like as if you're gonna dictate the pace of someone else's life you know people do what they want whatever they want you know so anyways um so yeah man i promise you that when you make yourself out to be a comfortable person to talk to like you really and here's here's how you do that by not like when people say yo man i don't really like you anymore you're not like why what do i do and what and making everything so dramatic and you're like um you know when you start saying shit like man uh, well i'm sorry to hear that like is there anything i could do to make the situation better or where did I mess up or what can I do better? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, people will gladly tell you why they don't like you, what they don't like about you, what they don't. But if you spend all your time telling them that they don't have the right to feel like that because you provided so much value as if you get to decide what's valuable for another person, because what you consider a gourmet din dinner is a fucking bag of chips to somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, there's a woman who I thought I provided her so much value. I thought I loved her. I thought I, I mean, I did. I did care a lot. But the shit that I thought was bringing her value, she didn't care about. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes it's the people that love you that you're not interested in them loving you. Sometimes it's the people that don't love you that you wish loved you. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes your own kids hate you and then somebody else's kid wishes that you were their parent. You might question, why is that? How come my own kids can't fucking like me? But yet I get so much admiration from the, the neighbor's kid to the point that they hate their parents and they wish I was their parent. Like why is life backwards? Like life isn't backwards. It's just... 
that's just how it is. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes in some families and some, you know, you're just, you just so happen to be in that place. But I think true peace and happiness comes when regardless of what circumstances, it doesn't dictate how you feel. You dictate how you feel because it's not about circumstances being perfect in order for you to be good because you know how to be good regardless of whatever the hell circumstance is doing. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's inner peace, man. It's more powerful than happiness, you know, like, like, cause you know, inner peace is like happiness that follows you everywhere. Like in the depths of hell, like of you going through hell on, on earth, you know what I'm saying? If you have inner peace, it won't be about the hell you're going through. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know how to overcome, you know how to not be a product of what all the bad shit happening to you. You know how to persevere. It's because you don't take the problem personal because you're, when problems occur, you're thinking about what's the solution and you're, and you're thankful that. You know what I'm saying? The problems have come not to destroy you, but to teach you something, to teach you. Some people come into your life to teach you how to let go. Some people come to like show you how to love. Some people, you know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah, man, there's a reason for everything. And if you try to find a good and everything and just know that shit happens for a reason and it's the world is not against you, then life becomes easier than when you're a victim and fucking the world needs to change in order for you to be good those people are never happy the people that are trying to put restrictions on free speech the people that are trying to like they get offended they call them snowflakes on the internet like people that man if you say anything out of line it's like they'll call the cops you know i saw this quote the other day it was like yo i'm gonna need you to stop calling the cops on people that hurt your feelings and uh yeah it's just funny though but you know some people are just so they feel like and it's like, yo, how many people are you going to lock up for that? You know, because if you call the cops on one person, it hurts your feelings. There'll always be another person that has the same mentality. that would enable the same type of words to come out of them that offends you. So it's like, instead of thinking that people needs to respect your buttons, why not get rid of your buttons? Why not become a buttonless person? Because when you don't have no buttons, there's nothing that a human being could press. inside. There's nothing for them to press anymore because you don't have buttons. You know what I mean? And it's much better to pray to get rid of your buttons than it is to pray for people to respect and give a damn about your buttons. Because the quicker you get rid of your buttons, the quicker it doesn't matter what people are trying to press because they can't even get a reaction out of you anymore because you're dead to the old you that would have got offended by things that you no longer take offense to. And that's powerful. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, um, yeah, so you do that by loving people, you know, loving your neighbors, loving just being empathetic like when people try to treat you like shit you're always wondering man i wonder what they're going through you know and then you worry about their sake you know what i'm saying you try to be a solution to the problem and you realize that you don't have to be molded by their injustice and now your injustice your injustice is molding other people you know what i'm saying so i don't know i feel like in this world we're either going to consciously or unconsciously make this world a better place to live in or a worse place like either this world is going to be better because you were born into it or worse And you're going to do that either consciously or unconsciously. You know what I'm saying? So first of all, it's better to be conscious that you're doing shit. Always better than doing shit unconsciously. Second of all, it's way better to try to make this world, you know, better because you were born into it than worse. You know what I'm saying? Like the the world is agonizing enough as it is without you being another root cause of that, of, of why the world, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't want people to point at you and say, it's people like you that it's why I hate living here. It's why I can't wait to like die and fucking go to the afterlife because i'm tired of dealing with people like you you know what i'm saying like so i don't know man um i don't know so it's it's good when you when you care about people when you you know what i'm saying when you're not a product of your circumstance i I was in two car accidents last two weeks i got three parking tickets and my shit got towed still having a time of my life you know what i'm saying i'm in debt like crazy but it's like it's all good man you know because you know like like what am I going to do? Complain as if complaining changes the circumstance. Once I'm done complaining, the circumstance is still the same. Like I rather figure out how I'm going to, what am I going to do to fix it? You know what I'm saying? Instead of complaining, but anyways, so yeah, in closing, if you want to be understood, communicate. If you don't communicate, you're always going to be misunderstood and that's your choice. You know what I'm saying? If you want to use the excuse of it being hard to talk to somebody and I understand, like, it's not like I'm not empathetic towards that. I, I get it. I get what it's like to have somebody that's impossible to talk to. Because all they all they know how to do is get offended by what you're saying instead of trying to come to a conclusion, come to a solution to what you're saying. All they know how to do is be bothered by what you're saying and feel like you don't have the right to say it, which makes you feel like you don't even want to have the conversation because it's like, fuck it, I just won't have the conversation. Like, you know, because it's easier not to. It's easier to just, you know, or, or so you think it is, but then you live in torment. The last story I want to end it on, there was a girl who, um, a woman who... Uh, 
there was a guy who for 30 years his wife cooked him some shit that he didn't like and he stood quiet for 30 years after 30 years he was like you know honey i never did like this bullshit you was cooking me like and she was like damn sweetie like how long did you dislike this meal because i cooked it for 30 years he's like well you know 30 years ago i came to the conclusion i hated this but i ate it because i didn't want to offend you and it's like i don't know if he expected her to just stop cooking it but how was she supposed to know that he didn't like it Every time she cooked it, he ate all of the food. So in her mind, he's like, oh, when he likes it, I'm going to keep cooking it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, if your wife is cooking some nasty shit that you prefer not to eat, why not express that? Why not say, hey, man, like, I don't really like this. Just so you know, you know what I'm saying? If you want to eat it, cool. But, you know, when you make this meal, please don't have me in mind because, like, I'm, I'm in no way interested in eating this. You know what I'm saying? Like, but we don't want to have those conversations because we're so scared of being offensive towards other people. And always worrying about having to offend somebody or trying not to offend somebody it's it's why there's so much miscommunication and people hiding shit from each other because everyone's such a damn snowflake these days it's crazy you know what i'm saying so anyways wish i had more time that's all i got time for and talk to you on the next podcast take care